and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one, oh, I love this one. It's all about, what do you do with a mess? Oh no, another mess. Let me tell you, I've got many of them. So I've learned how to t either survive them or gesso over them. What I have back here on the wall are some good examples, I think, of when things just go awry. It just didn't turn out right. And I lost it. But I do want to point out by doing some negative shape painting, you don't have to throw it away. You can turn it into another painting, probably unexpected. Here's another one. Boy, this thing just bubbled up all over the place. I decided to take advantage of it and turn them into flowers. You know, this is a little, throwing a little bit of that rubbing alcohol on wet paint. So here's another one. This is a typical step one, step two, step three. I actually start off with a mess sometimes. I mean, really making a mess, knowing I'm going to be making some flowers. The step two is I put the, the colors that are in my color wheel where I want them to be. And then step three is get rid of everything that doesn't look like the flower vase. It's a fun way of painting. But I do want to show you by, yeah, many times I end up with a mess. Okay, when I have a mess, you know what you do? Let it dry. And the next thing I do is find a focal point. That's what I do anyway. And so, bam, I hit a big red blob of cadmium red right there on top of this mess. Okay, now I have something to work with. You see, and then uh, from there we started to develop the whole bouquet and the this. And all of this was the mess. You don't even see it, but there it is. It's in there. And I did another one. I'm starting to really enjoy painting this way. Starting off with a mess, as opposed to waiting all day long to get to the mess. I start off with a mess and then do a lot of that negative type painting. See, it starts to paint itself. I love painting this way, especially when you start off really loose, which is my favorite thing. We can all stand there and paint there and paint things that are so perfect and, and everybody applauds us. Yay, it looks really nice. But I'd much rather be interested to show people your heart and why you paint, the excitement of painting. And making a mess is a great way to get to that spot where you always wanted to paint. Let's get started. So let me show you my materials. I'm sitting here at my desk. Here's my paper. It's a Fabriano Studio watercolor pad, hot press. I love that, nice and smooth. Here are my brushes, large brushes. My tubes of Holbein acrylic paint. They're nice and thick, that's what I love about it. it. Looks like it's gonna be mostly green, a little bit of black, and we've got some compost blue number two over here, just to mix, mix things up again. But going back to the paper again, I'm going to be doing all of my exercises just with this paper. And that way they all be the same size. But first of all, I need to make a mess. There's so many different ways of making a mess. Sometimes we spend all day long making a mess. I'm going to start off right off the bat. So I'm putting water over the whole, whole watercolor sheet. And I'm using a paper towel, by the way, just because it's quicker. <laughs> and I am going to make a mess. I have no intention about making a pretty picture. So I'm speeding up the process of making it a mess on purpose. Lots of water. The more water you use, you know, it's going to start flowing all over the place. Now, I also have a, a, a spray bottle of rubbing alcohol. Sometimes I'll do that. Let's see if it, yeah, sure. Look at that mess. Great. Cool. I want to get some black in there. Let's do everything everyone told us not to do. Don't use black. It's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and so there you have it. There's your mess. So a pretty good fun mess. So I actually start off with the mess and there it is. My next challenge is to let it dry and then see if I can find some a bouquet of flowers in there. It better be there and if it's not, I'll find it. But the next step I'm going to be doing is put in a focal point and we go from there. So the mess has dried. Now I get to paint. Here we go. <clears throat> this was mostly green with lots of splashes of blue and black. 
So I'm going to put in, like I promised you, a, a focal point. I also have some of these extra ones in case I feel like working on two or three of them at the same time. I like to have many of them around. All right, so the focal point is I'm mixing up some white gesso. It could be titanium. And I'm putting in some of that hot pink, that luminous opera. And I'm pretending that the focal point will be right there. There it is, you can't miss it. There it is, you can't miss that, boy. And because it's a floral, I'll add a couple of more. Maybe over here, something like that. I'm making all of this up. I mean, it didn't go anywhere where it was, so anything you do, it's gonna work. All right, bring in some of the dark colors in here, some of the dark blacks. Make sure you don't put the center of the flower in the center. There we go, more white, more yellow. I'm gonna make it really big. Let's really make it obvious. There you are. <laughs> now, I like some, where this is all going. Now let's, let's find a, a bouquet, so to speak. I do that with lots of white. I'm going to make the background neutral, which is like a gray. And you can mix that up. I mix it up over here, as you can see me doing it over here. Lots of white, a little bit of black, and a little bit of that yellow, which gives me that khaki color. I'm gonna go even lighter. Here we go. That's the color I want for the background. Now, here's where I say, well, there's a, there's a bouquet in here somewhere. <laughs> Negative shape painting. Stay with me on this one because it's, I'm looking at this at the same time you're looking at it. It's the same time zone. It's not like I, see it at the very beginning. I'm just hoping it's in there. So I'm painting an awful lot. Contrast is what I'm doing. Mostly about contrast. I could wipe away too some of this if I wanted to. I'm gonna keep this simple. I like how simple this is. And now I want to actually emphasize the vase. This is a simple little one. I like this painting. It's just a cute little painting. <laughs> you put color everywhere. It helps to hold the whole painting together. I'll give this vase a little more elegance. Come down in here. Don't forget the shadow. You have to anchor it. Very painterly, isn't it? And now I'm going to simplify the table. So the point is that, hey, it didn't work before. Do something, anything to it. It wasn't working then, so I give it another chance. Keeping this simple, sweet, little sweet little painting. And I want to make sure that, that becomes the focal point. Here we go. Bring up a little bit of that color down into here. I paint with my fingers a lot. <laughs> and bring some of this color over here. And make it darker and richer over here. And, oh, I'm gonna clean up some of this up here in the back. There you go, simplify it. There we go. Simplify it. That's what it was meant to be. A simple little sweet painting. More contrast over here. Oh boy, here we go. More contrast over here. <laughs> See how that flower now popped out? So it's the, old, the classic dark against light, dark against light. You see? And that's what we got here. Coming back in here, let me make it obnoxiously bright. 
I can always come back later on. So that's a good example of taking a mess and playing more with it. I mean, that's what gives you the education about painting. You can't make it any worser, all right? And so you may as well just try these different techniques. And by golly, I have hundreds of them. And that's how you learn how to be a better painter. You fall down a lot. But remember, even every runner falls down. The winners get up quicker. See you on the next Bob Blast.